for this webinar to this evening is to uh, starting an RV inspection business. And my name is Howard Jarris. Uh, I am with the NRVIA. I am contracted with them to do training and things like this. And I run my own uh, inspection business called HMRVI Corporation. And we'll talk a little bit more about our background and all that here as we, uh, as we just uh, start getting into this. Uh, but uh, what you responded to was probably something like this that talked about uh, becoming an RV inspector and some of the topics that I want to cover tonight are, you know, what is the NRVIA? Uh, what's the demand for RV inspections nowadays? Uh, why become an RV inspector? And what does an RV inspector inspect? as well as how do you create a great RV inspection report, uh, then how to actually get started as an RV inspector, the costs that are in, involved with that, uh, what you can possibly make. And then uh, if you're a shark viewer like I am, I'm always interested in return on investment. And so if you've watched that show, that's always the big deal. People, when they're investing money, they want to know, well, how long is it going to take to get that back? So I'm going to throw a little bit in that at the end, the return on investment, right? So those are some of the topics we're going to cover tonight. That may help you as we go here because questions may come up and you're thinking, well, how much does this cost and how do I get started? Well, know that we're going to be covering those things uh, as we go through. Now, I would suggest probably having something to write on if you don't already. Uh, I know when I've watched a lot of webinars in the past, I had my my uh, phone uh, camera handy and I would take pictures of slides and things uh, because there may be some information here that you wanna keep uh, even before getting the recording. So I would recommend both those options. Uh, I'm Howard Jarris and my wife Pam is, uh, she's uh, just in front of me on another computer also monitoring. Uh, we have been RVing since 2002. Uh, we've been full-time RVing since 2008, and what that means it was when I say full-time RVer, that means that we have been living in an RV 24-7, 365 since that time. So we're in our 13th year. Uh, we have over 100,000 miles uh, traveled in RVs, and a lot of people look at us and go, are you insane? Why would you want to live in 350 square feet with your spouse, and not only that, run a business? Are you nuts? Well, yeah, maybe. It's okay. Uh, we love the RV lifestyle. We love everything about it. Uh, so when we found out about the NRVIA and uh, what it was going to be doing back in 2014, we were excited that there was something out there that we felt at that point after our five, six years of RVing experience was enormously, it was going to be enormously helpful. Now, I've been a business owner and since the mid 80s, I was in my mid 20s and I discovered that I probably was going to be a terrible employee and that I would be better suited to be self-employed. So that's the direction I took at a young age, a 20 something with that was a bit arrogant. And I went after uh, different business models, trying to create something that would achieve the goal that I wanted. And uh, I could say that I've had some great business successes and some great learning experiences. I don't call those failures. I call them learning experiences. But at this point in our life right now, we feel that we've really come across something that is incredibly valuable and enormous service and has been of great value to the clients that we've had uh, the op the. Uh, the the ability to be able to work with, and then also the other inspectors that we have been able to train, and then also hear their success stories and what's going on. Now, there's it. I, I, this is not all just because you know I love. I mean, I love helping people, but I also love running a business, and I also love the tax benefits of running a business because if you are a W-2 person, you work for somebody else, there's only so much you can do when it comes to the United States tax code to reduce your tax debt. But if you run a business, there's an amazing ability to buy things that you would normally buy, they're for your business. But uh, one of our mentors and one of our uh, uh, tax advisors calls them personal conversion expenses, things that you buy for your business, but you can also you use them yourself. Therefore, they become a business write-off. And this is a wonderful thing. America, she is a great country, okay? Now, back in 2013, uh, Pam and I had a business failure and we wound up with a heavy tax load that year. And uh, my business went out of, out of business in 2009 due to what happened at that point in the economy. And so there we were full timing and I didn't have a business and doing my taxes and it was bad. It was really bad. And I told Pam, I said, you know, this is the bail, dear, and we've got to do something. So, you know, I heard about this thing where we could become an RV inspector and it's a brand new industry, but this would be something that's really cool. And uh, what do you think she said? She said, uh, no, 
uh, no, we no, let's not do that. We've just come out of something else and let's just let that sit for a while. But after I showed her that uh, tax bill in 2014, she agreed to uh, take another ride with me and let's take a look at this RV inspection. And uh, at this point now we can say after over for seven years that we are so glad that we did because now that we can see the impact that we can have in the RV industry while we're living a wonderful lifestyle on the road and we can operate our business anywhere. And as I said earlier, our business is called HMRVI Corporation. And you can see us here. Here's, uh, here's myself and here's Pam. Uh, this purple monkey here, uh, that's the reason we have a purple monkey there is we call our inspection reports the purple monkey locator. And what a purple monkey is, is a big hairy problem that sits on your shoulder and laughs at you thinking this is really going to be expensive and maybe you've had some of those purple monkeys in your home ownership but that's so we, we talk about purple monkeys in class uh, this is uh, sir winston churchill he's our our two-year-old Pembroke Welsh Corgi that, Corgi that happens to be a fluffy, and uh, he comes along for the ride. There he is sitting in mom's lap uh, while we're driving the RV down the road, and uh, so he's our he's our fur kid, and uh, he he also loves the RV lifestyle. So that is Howard and Pan. Now, I have in my experience of sitting around campfires with. Um, with other campers and while we were work camping early in our uh, full-time experience, uh, we, we would hear the horror stories of people who bought new and used RVs and all the problems that they had with them. And, and more so even when they were new thinking, I bought a new RV, how is it that this, I'm having all these problems with it. Didn't the manufacturer build it properly? Didn't the dealer check it out before I received it? Well, no, that isn't the case. They don't have the time and their pre-delivery inspection is nowhere near as detailed as what we now do as NRVI inspectors. And I, I can tell you from recent personal experience, Pam and I bought our first brand new RV last year. It's almost a year ago, it was last August. And what we've normally done is buy them about two years used and we are in our fourth full-time RV living home uh, at this point. And we bought that one new last year and uh, we, it spent two weeks two weeks in the bay, service bay, after we purchased it, while we were waiting for it. But even the day after we signed the paperwork, the guy who, the master technician who did the PDI inspection on it, he had to go back in. I found things that kept him busy for another five hours. And then as we lived in another day or more, uh, while we're going through our inspection, there was two more weeks of things that needed to be covered. And that didn't even do the trick. We wound up going back to Red Bay, Alabama, because this is a Tiffin uh, back in uh, back in uh, February. So I can tell you that the RV buying experience can be a nightmare if somebody does not have somebody that knows something about the RV to be able to coach them through the process so they don't look like this kid, right? And uh, we've, we've, we've seen some people with that expression on their face. They just can't imagine that this actually happens in the RV industry. And it does, but it can be alleviated by a uh, independent third party and RVI inspector who can go out there and evaluate that RV for that person. Okay, so what's the Association that Trains and Certifies Inspectors? That's the NRVIA, and that's the National Recreational Vehicle Inspectors Association. And uh, what the mission is of the NRVIA is, uh, here's some points, but we're trying to increase, uh, increase awareness of the importance of quality RV inspections, and also to enhance the professionalism of the inspectors within our group. Uh, we do that by setting and promoting standards for RV inspections. Uh, we provide educational programs needed to achieve excellence uh, in the profession and to meet the needs of its members and to develop a nationwide network of certified professional RV inspectors across North America that have undergone a strict standardized testing and certification process. And that is what I'm involved doing right now to get folks through so that they, when they get done, they leave school as uh, certified NRVIA inspectors. And in the end is we want to ensure that the consumer is getting a quality inspection, a report by a true professional. And uh, one, of the act, one of the things that I've kind of come across and, and thought about in my, as my experience now as we're seven years in is that I kind of think of us as the non-franchise franchise. In other words, if anybody's ever been involved in a franchise, there's royalties and fees and all that kind of thing. But what a franchise has is a successful business system, which is what we do. 
but we don't have that part. We're not collecting royalties or any of that sort of thing. But what we do have is a system. And what we're going for is no matter if a client uses an inspector in the West Coast, the Midwest, or the East Coast, they can be guaranteed that they're going to get a very similar product across the board so that because we do have clients that use inspectors multiple times. They may use me to do an inspection and decide to walk away from that unit because it was more than the work that they wanted to, or they weren't able to negotiate a successful price, or they just didn't want that much headache. So they go find another NRVI inspector in another area and they go ahead and then use them. And what we're going for is they should expect the same level of service, of quality and of reporting across no matter no matter what NRVI inspector they're using. So this is really the magic here. And that's that's the goal of if the NRVI is to create consistency, true professional and quality reporting and a great inspection report. Now, the NRVIA uh, mentioned a little bit early it was launched in January of 2014. I heard about it in mid 2013 while they were in setup phase. And I got started in early 2014. Uh, our owners are Steve Anderson and Terry Cooper, along with uh, their, their beloveds, Kathy Jo Anderson and Aveda Cooper. At this point, we have about 500 active inspectors nationally, active inspectors. That means of those 500, if they did each did one a day, okay, we'd have 500 inspections a day going on. All right. Probably not conceivable to do more than that unless they're doing a very basic. So 500 inspections a day, that's not a lot. Now we're adding about 25 new inspectors about every few months or so, right? And the demographic that we've seen so far is anywhere from entrepreneur, entrepreneurs in their 20s uh, to retired full-time RVers. We have quite a demographic across the board of folks that are joining our ranks. But the really staggering thing to me is, the need is about 3,000 RVs a day really need inspecting. Now, not a lot of the people that are buying them know that, but about 3,000 a day. Now, I just heard a number uh, this past couple of weeks that the, uh, the, uh, the RVIA put out, the uh, Recreational Vehicle Industry Association, that they're going to pump out 576,000 RVs out of Elkhart, Indiana this year in that area. Now, if we took that and divided that out by one day, you know, 365 days, that would be about 1,600 RVs a day that would need to really be inspected because neither the RV technicians nor the dealerships themselves can really, really adequately do what we do to uncover the problems that exist when these RVs leave the manufacturer, drive hundreds or even thousands of miles down our wonderful American roads and get beat up and then have issues when they finally get to the final consumer. So this is where the gap and this is where an NRVI inspector comes into play, right? So there's, there's quite a large need. Now, I, I always love seeing things like this and this is right off our NRVIA website. Uh, these are comments that were taken off. We get a lot of great comments from clients who come and even make comments here. We, there's YouTube videos about NRVI inspectors and their experience. Uh, there's lots of favorable, favorable comments. If you just even Google RV inspection reviews, uh, you'll get some interesting information and they're, they're very positive. Once people find out about us, they realize how much money they saved. And even, even with the expense of the inspection, they probably... Uh, they didn't wind up paying for it. The owner of the vehicle did because of the amount of money that they saved. So we, we love hearing great things like this. And what it all comes down to is just the fact that we need why we need you. OK, we need more people. The more people we're going to have in this industry, the more inspections we're actually going to be able to do because we have found it's been snowballing. We get more and more awareness and more and more comments. And therefore, we're doing more and more. So eventually we can get to that point where we can get to that 3,000 units a day that are being inspected, okay? So that's where I'm going with. Now, look at who's buying RVs? Who's buying these things? And I love this just came out. Uh, I, I got this last week from, the, uh, from one of my uh, industry uh, associations, and this came from the rvia.org website. You can see that up there in the blue box, rvia.org. You might want to write that down. Uh, there's great information here about the industry and when it comes to new RVs and what's going on. But what I was really interested in was who's buying these things, right? What's And I was glad they did this study. So they put a poll out and they did a study, and I'm not going to, you know, break, go into great depths with this. I just wanted you to see some of this. They broke it down by ethnicity. 
by the generation who's actually buying these things. Okay, they talk about whether they're married or they're uh, unmarried, the median age and the average income buying these RVs. Hmm, interesting. Average spent on an RV, 75,000. Now there's RVs you can buy for 10, 20, 30,000. There's RVs that you can buy for, you know, a class A uh, gas motorhome, two, 300,000. You can buy a class A diesel pusher. That's got the diesel engine in the back, more like a bus. They could go anywhere from 300,000 up to almost $3 million, right? Now these things cost more than most people's homes. I think you would probably agree. Now a home is inspected, right? I'm sure most of you over the course of your lives, if you've owned a home and sold it, you probably had to have a home inspection. Well, that's exactly what this is, except it's for the home on wheels. And the home on wheels needs this even more than the, uh, the fixed home because this thing is basically a rolling earthquake going down the road. It needs to have somebody take a look at it. But when it trades hands, when it's new, when somebody privately sells one, it's a used RV, it needs to have somebody take a look at it to be sure that items are taken care of before that new owner takes possession so that somebody's going to go out and they, they buy an RV so they can create lasting memories while they're traveling this great country enjoying the RV lifestyle. That's why they buy them. Okay, so we want to be sure that it's not wrecked because of some of the things that do come up and some of the issues where appliances aren't working or breakdowns or just leaks. There's just a whole host of things. I apologize if the uh, if it's getting noisy. We are we're uh, south of Houston right now between Houston and Galveston and, and a big storm has moved in. So hopefully it's not uh, it's not deterring my sound at all. All right. Let's see. Travel, 33% want to travel in comfort, 33% want to explore, 27% just want a base camp. And then it's interesting that, you know, we've been in this COVID thing, only 16% decided that restrictions over other travel is the reason that they purchased uh, an, an RV. You know, they couldn't travel otherwise, so they, they purchased RVs. But we noticed in the past year that RV sales have truly jumped astronomically. So I think that number's a little uh, underinflated. I think it's actually higher. Uh, we call it COVID camping, right? People couldn't do anything. They needed to kind of keep isolated, so they, they bought RVs. Um, where are they going? They're going to state parks, RV resorts, maybe private campgrounds, national parks. That's where they're going. And 55% of them, some of them are traveling more than 200 miles or less than 200. Some are traveling more than 200, uh, you know, and so on. All these different statistics. 25% uh, use their RV for work and travel. Uh, some travel with more than three people. So a lot of families and the demographic right now has, and this is just a lot of stuff. I'm not going to read through this. I've made some highlights here, but interestingly enough, 11.2 million households own an RV in 2021. That is up a bunch from 20 years ago when it was 6.9 million and 26% from 2011. So the industry continues to grow. It continues to boom. We are a society that loves to go travel. They love to get out. We love our cars. But I can tell you what's one thing better than a car is an RV. It's a rolling bed. It's a, a rolling kitchen. It's your rolling bathroom. It's everything you need while you travel. When you're there, you're there. They're just a wonderful way to live. That's why we love it so much. 46 million people, Americans planned on taking an RV trip in the next 12 months. Wow. I guess that means there's going to be a lot of rentals. Hmm. I bet those rentals need inspections as well. 20% uh, of US respondents uh, are more interested in RVs as recreational travel uh, than any other type of travel option at this point. That's interesting. And again, I mentioned 18 to 34 years old. 84% uh, were in that realm. Uh, and then others, those that do are in that uh, age range of 18 to 34, are planning to buy another RV in the next five years. Wow. Uh, I heard a statistic a while back, and I think it's still true when I poll people and when I talk to them, the average amount of RVs a person owns if they like the lifestyle over a lifetime is seven, seven RVs. That's pretty amazing. And I've talked to some people that have had four or five in two years uh, just because they really didn't have enough help to kind of really figure out what they really needed in an RV that would suit their wants and needs. But I mean, the average, it's, that's, it's about seven, seven in a lifetime. That's, that, that to me tells me people really do love that. I love the lifestyle. Now, 31% are first-time owners. These are the folks that really need us. 
They don't know anything about RVs. They don't know anything about black tanks, gray tanks, water pumps, electrical systems, which RVs have three. There's just all kinds of things they don't know. So not only do we have the ability to inspect RVs for them, we also have the ability to consult them and how to use it. Uh, it's just another part of our business model as inspectors that we can that uh, we can sell to them. Heavy rain. Okay. Uh, Pam tells me we have heavy rain in the area. I can hear it on the RV roof. <laughs> I hope it's not coming through too badly. All right. So becoming an RV inspector, why do people buy an RV? Well, I've alluded to some of these already. They want to have fun. An RV should be fun. You're able to go places, take your toys, go park by a lake, uh, go park in a Walmart uh, parking lot overnight if you're traveling and uh, stock up at Walmart, stay overnight and then leave the next morning. Where you are is where you are. It is, it's your home on wheels. It's very comfortable and it has everything you need. And while you're doing this, you're building memories with your friends and family. Uh, you're traveling in comfort. And again, wherever you are, you're home. Now, some people buy these just for a life change, a possible change of lifestyle. So they're, you know, we know folks that have just sold it all. Uh, we sold 3,800 square foot of house in the mountains of Colorado. We sold everything and over a period of a number of years, we wheeled down everything to the point that we could live in a 350 square foot RV, have no storage space, have our truck and that's it. That's, that's, all, that's, that's all we have. We love that lifestyle, we love that. Some people don't wanna do that, that's okay. Uh, we have a lot of inspectors that are uh, sticks and bricks folks, and they run their uh, inspection business in their local area. We have other folks that are like me that love to roam, see the country, and write off their travels while they're doing that because they're running their inspection business. Right? There's there's a great a great reason right there. All right. Uh, so. Why offer RV inspection services? Well, safety for the family while traveling. Um, RVs have some volatile systems on board and unless uh, things are maintained and taken care of properly, that could become problematic. Uh, we offer inspection services to protect that investment. People are spending a lot of money and before they go ahead and spend a couple hundred thousand dollars, let's say, and then find out they need to spend another 20 or 30,000 because there were issues that weren't uncovered at the point of sale, then that's not a good, that's not a good thing. That's not a good investment. Uh, we want people to have trouble-free experiences with their RVs when they go out there. Uh, there was a period a couple of years ago where there were so many issues. People were going, I don't want to be an RV or this is terrible. Why did I spend all this money to be aggravated? And we don't want that. We want the RV industry to continue to flourish and we want people to have a good time. So this is another reason why inspections help people toward that end. So we uncover these things before they, before they actually sign the check. Okay, and we're not paying for expensive things twice, right? If a refrigerator doesn't work and it needs to be replaced, that could be two to four thousand dollars. Why not let the owner of the vehicle pay for that, not you? And it's as I mentioned earlier, also it is essential for that new RV owner, the person who's never RV'd before but wants to adopt the lifestyle. This is absolutely a must for them. 31% new RVers. All right, here's just some pictures. Uh, uh, that we've uh, accumulated over the years. Safety first, okay? Some of the largest issues with RVs are, relate to electrical fires and propane fires. Uh, maybe even some of you have been driving down the highway and seen an RV on fire. Uh, this happens. Uh, Pam and I had almost lost an RV uh, early on in our experience in our one of our first few years of full timing. We were traveling in our fifth wheel with the propane tanks on in order to run that refrigerator. We thought that's what you did. It's a propane refrigerator. It needs that source to be cooling because when we're not plugged in, it's not running our electric. It needs to run on propane. Well, uh, something occurred inside the RV while we were traveling uh, and we were negotiating around a truck stop and it, the stove was lit. And because the auto piezo kicked in, the propane turned on, tanks were on, a fire was starting inside. And luckily, it was within a minute of that starting that we detected it and were able to stop that. Otherwise, we could have had something that might have looked like that RV up there on the right. So safety first and safety as inspectors, we're evaluating the propane system, we're evaluating the electrical system. So if there's any issues, we're likely gonna find these things before these sorts of things can happen. Now, we do inspections to help clients save on unknown repairs, right? Kind of alluded to this again earlier. A shop rate, either whether it's going to a dealership or a mobile facility they'll come to 
a client can run anywhere from 85 to 175 an hour. And if it's a mobile service, there may also be a, a minimum charge of one hour or even a trip charge. Um, if you buy the RV, you don't get it inspected. There's problems with the RV. It has to go back. It's going to sit there and wait for maybe four, six, eight, maybe even 12 weeks because they're that backed up. And then there may not be parts at this point as well. So here you are paying for that RV that you just purchased. You may not get to use it for weeks, maybe months. We've heard stories of people in a year, they hadn't been out in their RV once because of the problems that happened to it and just trying to get the thing ready to hit the road. These are the kind of things we don't wanna see happen. Now, water damage, interior walls, floors, and ceilings, right? This is something that we as inspectors want to uncover. Exterior wall delamination, separation of the outer skin from the wall surface itself, the uh, structure of that wall may be due to water penetration. Uh, non-functioning appliances. These are all some of the things that we do as inspectors to help uh, un uncover the unknown so that, again, that RV buyer is not having to pay for these things twice. Uh, this picture on the left here, owner said there was a small soft spot. What we're looking at here is that was a center island, okay, center island with plumbing in it, right? There was a sink and some electrical drain and the owner stated a small soft spot, but when uh, that was identified by an inspector and then eventually that repair was going to be made, this is what they discovered, okay? Interesting, right? Would this have happened? Would that have been discovered if, if it had not been for the inspection? No, probably not. Later on, as the damage got worse and the floor became not a small soft spot, but a large soft spot while walking on it, then the, then the damage could have been, could become even worse. And we don't want to see that happen, right? Now, why can you, uh, why can you uh, be the key to an RV's uh, buyer success? Well, once you may already have this, if not, once trained, good product knowledge, right? So knowledge about the product, knowledge about RVs, you know what they're about and you're able to consult somebody else and so it, that they can find the RV that they're looking for. Uh, you may become, or you are an experienced RVer. Uh, experienced RVers, wow, it's just, it's an easy term to, to, uh, for them to go right into the inspection industry. It was for us, because we'd already had close to six years on the road at the point that we uh, became inspectors. Uh, I mean, I thought I knew a lot, and then I took the first week of class on the technical side, and I discovered that I didn't know as much as I thought I did, uh, interestingly enough. Um, you understand the buying process is not perfect. And that is true. And maybe some of you on here have already gone through that process yourselves and you've experienced it. And maybe that is why you're actually here, because you want to become the solution to the problem that you encounter. Uh, your main focus is the success of an RV, RV buyer. And you do that by offering a third party independent RV inspection. In other words, there's no skin in the game for you. Your goal is to work with your client, the RV buyer or seller, to help uncover issues with that RV, right? and you're working with your client, you're not, uh, you're not understating or overstating, it's third party independent, no skin in the game. And that's what we love about our industry, okay? Uh, you understand the importance of RV safety, talked a little bit about that already, and you can offer a client multiple services in your business model. So as you grow, maybe you're starting out, you'll be offering just inspections, but then later on, you'll feel comfortable with being able to describe after they, if they decide to purchase that RV, how to go ahead and use that RV. How, what do I do about the electrical? How about the generator? What about the inverter? How do I use this? What's this black and gray type thing? What, what about that stinky slinky? What about, how do I use this thing? How do I live in it? How do I operate it? Well, this is where an RV inspector can also provide an additional service of what we call the, the RV walkthrough at the end. Uh, we can do fluid analysis consultations uh, with our clients. We uh, pull fluids out of the vehicle. I'll talk a little bit more about that, show you some examples, but we can't take engines and things apart, but we can pull fluid samples out, we can send them to a lab and get some very interesting information back. That can be also become a standalone service, right? So there's lots of different ways that your business can grow so that you're not just doing inspections. You may even decide to do a little bit of, once you get into a little bit of uh, light RV repair, right? You might offer some RV repair service as well, just from the information you gain from the first week of technical class, the technical part of the training, okay? So that's another possible uh, thing that you can do. Right. Later on, you might decide to become a, 
a, a, a technician or something, okay? But different things, you wanna have multiple services in your business so that as to the ebbs of flow of business cycle, that your income remains consistent. But the bulk of your business will come uh, from RV inspections. The great thing about what I do, and I, and I heard this when I started out is, uh, I could be, now my question myself, can I be an RV inspector? And really the thing is 80% of RV problems they're easy to access and easy to fix. And this is a wonderful thing because we don't have to repair the, we don't have to repair the RV. We don't have to know how to repair it. We just need to know how to operate it, operate those items, see if they work. If they don't work, that's what we're reporting on. That's what we're uncovering. So to be an inspector, you don't have to know everything about the RV initially. You will learn as you go. You will learn a lot more about things because you're going to want to know. You're going to want to, you'll never call a, uh, an RV technician, again, you'll do your own work and you'll learn as you go, but it's not going to be like instant, ah, I now know everything. It's depending on your experience, your past, there's going to be some education and process, which is why the NRVIA uh, asks its members to conti have continuing education. You know, we want to continually keep learning and investigating our craft so that we can become uh, better inspectors. The more we know, the better we become. I can tell you right now, I'm a lot better inspector than I was seven years ago. Why? Because I know a heck of a lot more. I've got that experience behind me. Okay. All right. Benefits of an RV inspection business. It's a low point of entry, right? So you can be fully certified, acquire all the tools you need, register the business and governance for less than $10,000. Okay. That's not too bad. Now, I myself, I have spent $250,000 and a lot of time to get a franchise corporation going with the possibility of the return on that investment to be two years. Uh, I've also started other businesses that were a lot less. Uh, you know, I found that the, you know, the, the more expensive businesses seem to be a lot more they create a lot more income than some of the, the lower entry point, like the $100 multi-level marketing business or something like that. But uh, $10,000, not a lot to start this kind of business. It's completely portable. You run the business out of your RV, your home, wherever you want to live. All you need is a phone, tablet, uh, <laughs> laptop and tablet and a bucket of tools. That's it. That's all you need. Uh, other than travel and marketing, it's a high margin service. So other than travel, marketing and annual membership fees, there are a few expenses uh, to offset the earned income uh, from performing inspection. So uh, I like that as the business model, it's high margin service. Tax, tax benefits, U.S. tax code, rewards the entrepreneur, rewards small business. Uh, you know, with a job, you earn money and you pay taxes on the top line. With a business, uh, you have the ability and that 1040 form at the very bottom there that there's that adjusted gross income. And the whole idea is to get that adjusted gross income as low as possible before you turn that form over and do the backside. Well, that's what a business allows us to do. And so with a business, we can write off things like the cell phone. We can write off the computer. We can write off vehicle mileage. Uh, we can even write off, uh, we wrote, I wrote off my home office. Uh, that I used uh, in my business, uh, other businesses at home, because that's what the tax code allows me to do. Uh, now we love that we can travel and we go places and we write off our travels as long as we're doing business in that area. That's a wonderful, that's a beautiful thing. And that's why we love, that's for us, that's why we love the mobile uh, RV inspection business model. Now it's an unregulated business. Uh, some businesses are, are, are heavily regulated, regu uh, regu regulated by government entities, other things. Right now, the RV inspection has no special regulations outside, uh, you know, other than having a, you know, a tax number. And if somebody starts as a sole proprietorship, um, you can, you could, I wouldn't suggest it, but you can just use your social security number. But in most cases, we'll recommend an LLC or an S Corp uh, for this type of business. And that will require an ID number, but there's, there's no regulation on us. Uh, you set your own hours, work when you want to. Okay, if you don't want to get up at six in the morning on a Saturday, do an inspection uh, at eight, then nobody's forcing you to. They might choose somebody else and that's okay, but you get to choose when and where you want to work because you are in business for yourself. You work with whomever you want. Now, as a business owner, there have been times where I decided that the person that I was going to be working with would be what I call in my mind a hemorrhoid. Right? They were going to be a problem. Now, I either have to charge the hemorrhoid fee and accept their business or perhaps uh, decline from actually taking the job. But nobody's going to force you to accept the job. That's completely up to you. 
Okay. Now there's not a lot of people like that. And I'm sure you would agree, but every now and then you get somebody. Uh, and when I ran retail stores, I could tell you, everybody who walked in the door, I had to deal with some people. I smiled when they walked in others. I smiled when they walked out. Uh, we don't <laughs> typically, we, we're, we're glad that we don't find a lot of those type folks that are RVers. RVers tend to be happy people. Um, here's a good one. It's a cash-based business. Uh, you conduct an RV inspection, you're paid on the spot. Okay. Now, when I say cash, it's we we accept money by credit card. Okay. So we bill, and actually, our inspections are billed before we leave our RV to go do an inspection. That is paid in full. It is paid by credit card. Okay. It's so basically cash on the spot. Right. Uh, there's no inventory. Right. So there's no there's no storm of supplies, a truck full of spare parts. Um, I carry some fluid kits. Okay, and I talked about fluid analysis. We need some kits to be able to put oils and coolants out of engines. And so we have, a, we have those on board and those are easy. I just have those in a bag with the pumps that we need to extract the fluid. Costs about $45 a kit. Uh, they sell anywhere from $100 uh, for a single one up to maybe $350 for five fluid samples. But you can lower those kit costs by ordering in higher quantities, therefore increase your margins, right? But it's not required that way. Uh, no staff needed. Wow, there's a big thing. Uh, I, I've had as many as 40 employees and four managers, and I'll tell you what, I would work 60 to 80 hours a week. Now, you know, I made decent money, but I, I was working a lot. Anytime a store manager called me and said uh, they just lost some employees and they needed help, then here I am packing my bags and I'm traveling, uh, you know, hundreds of miles to go to another store and stay there to fill the gap until they can hire a new employee and get them trained. So I love this part. It is just Pam and I. We are co-owners in our business of HMRVI. That's it. Now, other people, other inspectors uh, have their family involved. And this is a great deal. And I love that Pam and I do inspections together. Okay, and our clients love that as well. But other inspectors have trained their spouses or, or children, adult children to help in their business as well. Uh, maybe one checks the interior while the other reviews the exterior. It shortens up the process and uh, you, know, you can operate your business that way if you like. But most of our inspectors, we, we don't have employees and uh, that's, that's a big headache that's removed uh, when you don't have to have employees and, and uh, the unemployment insurance and all those other things that are required when you have employees. We don't do that. How about no cold calling? Right? Anybody pick up the phone and had to call somebody out of the blue and try and sell something? Well, you know, you're always going to be marketing your business. And I don't know if any of you have been in business for yourselves. Uh, I'm always wearing something. It's a hat. It's a shirt. Uh, in my vehicle, it looks like a NASCAR. Uh, it's got HMRVI on. It talks about a home inspection for an RV. People always know what I am and what I am about. Uh, but you don't have to, in our case, I don't cold call people. Now, the cool thing about the NRVIA and association with this, uh, the National RV Inspectors Association is when people Google RV inspections, on the front page is going to be nrvia.org and they click on that link and you'll see that here nrvia.org it's in green locate they can click uh enter the city and state where that uh that rv is located and find an inspector in that area and in addition to that the nrvia and it's that stephanie henson who i mentioned earlier she sends out at least a couple of, of three or sometimes even an email every day uh, for people that are looking for an inspector but can't find one even within 250 miles of them. So Stephanie sends out a, a list through an email to the uh, whole inspector force to see if somebody might be traveling through that area or somebody's willing to travel to that area because maybe they're a full timer and they wanted to go to that area and they'll be able to write off their travels and then do that inspection for that client. So I would say probably a good 50% or more of the inspection business that uh, our inspectors get or new inspectors get is through the nrvia.org website, just through that locator and through Stephanie sending out emails. So that's pretty impressive. As time goes, uh, you, you might build it up so much that you, it might be less of that and it might be more of your website. Uh, we have uh, inspectors that get two, three, four, five calls a day for inspections. And some people are just asking questions. Other are legitimately looking for uh, the inspector to inspect something for them. So uh, some of them say, I, I just can't handle the work. They pick and choose what they can and they try and refer off to get help if possible, right? So always a good problem to have when there's more business than, uh, than the more demand than you have time for. All right, tools of the trade. Wanted to show this in, uh, show this to you. Easy to transport, easy to use. Here's my tools. There's a bucket there. 
Uh, there's a there's a bag, a blue bag, where the fluid analysis uh, sampling tools are put in. But all this fits into that bucket. That, in addition to my ladder, uh, I use a little giant ladder that uh, extends uh, in its A-frame. It can be nine or ten feet tall in its full extension. It easily gets you up onto the roof of an RV. Okay, so we recommend this type of ladder. But that's it. That's all it requires to be a successful inspector. Right. So the the tools are not uh, not a, it's not a huge investment on that side. Right. Now, let's look at this. Uh, the NRVIA, I mentioned standards, um, criteria things, the code of ethics and the standards of practice. These become the foundation of the business model for an NRVIA inspector. Okay. Now, we have 12 code of ethics, and we've got, uh, so we've got some standards, and they're listed at nrvia.org, and I would highly recommend you go there and look at, uh, click on, go to nrvia.org, look at the About Us link, and you'll see both the Code of Ethics and the Standards of Practice. You can review those, okay? Now, what most of the time, the standards tell what we inspect because we get a lot of questions about what exactly do you do? Because some people just think we're going to look at uh, look at the VIN number and stick our head up the tailpipe and that's it. That's an RV inspection. Well, that's not what it is at all. And I mentioned the phrase a home inspection for your RV. That is what it is. Now, home inspectors spend two to four hours doing an inspection. We spend anywhere from four to eight hours, and it depends on the level of inspection we sell and the type of RV we're inspecting, right? So let's look at a list of what an NRVI inspector inspects, right? This is what you'll see on the NRVI website. Okay, there's uh, 44 specific items there. Uh, we've got our purpose, our scope of uh, general statement, general limitations, which these wind up in the inspection report as a restatement. But here's all the items that an NRVI inspector is evaluating. Wow, that's a lot, right? But it doesn't really tell a prospective client, well, what are you doing with the, what are you doing with the water here? What are you doing with the refrigerator? What are you doing with the slide out? Let's look at exterior components. Now, if you're actually on the website and click on that plus right there, what you would get is this, okay? Now, this is a listing of exterior components, what it is the RV inspector is inspecting, right? So we're looking at all the roof penetrations, the sealants, the roof type, things like that. Now, that still doesn't really explain to a, uh, to a, a client what is you're actually doing with the joints and the seals. What else are you doing? So what we do is we take this list and we create a four to six page document that we can send out to our clients and we call it our points of inspection. And that looks like this. So this would be the points of inspection for the roof category. And now we're listing this out more clearly. We rate the overall condition. We look at the roof material and the sealants, evaluate the joints. Uh, we rate each one of those independent components that is on that roof. And then we're trying to identify areas of concern and potential water intrusion. That's the main reason to get up on that roof, water intrusion and soft spots. Because if we find those on the roof, we're probably gonna find some issues inside the RV, all right? So these are all generated from our standards, okay? So these are all given to inspectors uh, as information when they come to class through training. This is how we get you to go through and learn the process of what it takes to actually inspect an RV. We've got all this already listed for you, what it is that you're gonna be looking at and evaluate, and then we just teach you what you're looking for. Now, boy, I noticed, uh, how am I doing on time, Stephanie? I see we're like 6.44. Um, I guess I'm getting a little chatty. I really wanted to show this inspection report because it's really cool. Um, uh, I don't, anybody, any comments on time? How's everybody doing? Is we okay? If I run a little bit over, is that, is that okay? I think you're doing okay, Howard, because we haven't had, it seems like everybody's paying close attention. We haven't really had any questions and you're about 45 minutes in. Um, so, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I try to keep it down. I just can't, I just, you know, I just get going. <laughs> <laughs> That's because we're very detail oriented. <laughs> what I want to do, if you would um, write down or take a picture of this link at the bottom, this is an inspection report that was done for uh, our director of the NRVIA, Steve Anderson, and I, I did this inspection for him, and he agreed it was okay to share and make it public because it was an RV trader, and that's how it's sold. So if you'll take a picture, write down that link, you can go look at it later, okay? But it's got some really cool stuff in it. I'm just going to jump over real quick, and I'll show you that. I'll just show you some highlights, uh, but you can, you can dig in deep. If you were to print it, it's more than 100 pages. Now, this RV, Mr. Anderson sold it last year. It was sold in RV trader. The report was created just for that purpose and 
Um, uh, Steve Anderson sold it. The, guy, the buyer came and bought this RV sight unseen, brought a check for $187,000 from his 2013 Itasca Ellipse, bought it sight unseen. Reason being was this report provided all the information that they needed to be able to make that educated decision if they wanted it or not. So I'm just let me just jump over real quick here. Uh, this is this is the link you would go to, right? This is what you would see. And this is the report. And this is an HTML document. So it is completely interactable. So in other words, you can click on the pictures and see larger versions of them. Um, we have a table of contents. You can bounce around the inspection report to different sections that you want to go to. Okay, this, this RV has 21 distinct sections that were evaluated in this report. Okay, so there's a lot in here. We categorize the issues we found by life safety issues, by major issues, uh, by minor issues. Major issues would be things that are expensive, life safety issues, things that absolutely need to be identified, and then minor issues, things that uh, the owner needs to, the new owner needs to know about, but they could be addressed later. They might want to still factor this into, the, into the, their negotiations. And then maybe things of note or comment, uh, things that we want uh, just for the, uh, just to call out to the, uh, to the prospective buyer. Uh, things like, um, let's see, what do we have here? Uh, okay. I think we had some owner stated comments or things in there. Uh, we have the ability to attach brochures and owner's manuals and service records, right? Now this report, again, is incredibly detailed. I don't really have the time to go through all this. Here's our standards of practice stated again, right? They're stated in here for both the, our client and for the, uh, purchase, for the purchaser of the RV, uh, whoever our client is. And then we go through these 22 distinct, 21 distinct sections about the RV, about the roof. I talked earlier about the roof, the components we're evaluating. We have pictures, we identify sealant issues. Okay. And just for example, is this what you would want to see the sealant on the roof of an RV? This is the street side rear corner where the rear cap joins the roof part. And here's a sealant issue where water is going to make its way in. And over time, to, uh, over time will deteriorate that wall, the integrity of that wall and roof, right? So these are the things that we're looking for, the things we want to identify and we recommend repair. Now, okay, you got you all can look at this at your own, at your own leisure. Uh, here I am playing with a, a little cowling that's on this mirror here, it was loose. I talked about it. Uh, the guy that bought this, uh, Mr. Anderson was talking to him three weeks later, that piece of cowling fell off on the trip down to, to uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana uh, for FEMA initiative, which is why he bought it, that fell off. Uh, so he knew about it, didn't fix it, and, you know, there you go. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna go to the very end, right? There's lots of pictures, there's lots of identifying things. We have video. You can, we, anything that moves, we video, we can place it in the report so that our clients can watch that. They can hear things, they can see squeaks or hear squeaks, they can see things going on, maybe erratic movements, things like that. Uh, slide, slides that don't align properly, okay? What really sold this RV, what really did it was the ability for us as inspectors and with this software that we use is to place 360 images in the report so that we could place somebody inside the RV and show them something like this. So they can look all around, they can look up, they can look down. Ooh, cool embroidery on the chair. Uh, I mean, they can see exactly what this RV looks like the day of the inspection, right? How about placing them in the kitchen area? Okay, so here we are. This is probably about a $325,000, $350,000 RV when new. Okay, full wall slide. It's got all the bells and whistles, fireplaces, TVs, washer, dryer, uh, dish, dish drawer. You can look up, down, look all around. Is that cool? It's like being in a sphere, I can place somebody directly inside this. So even if our clients are not present from the inspection, it makes them feel like they were there. And that's because of our software, the way we're training the, the uh, inspectors and the ability they have to be able to use this properly. Now, uh, another thing that's kind of hard to show, and I'll just, you know, real quickly, is underneath. You know, how about underneath the RV? You know, looking around, okay? So I can actually place somebody underneath. Here we are looking, uh, there's the exhaust system, okay? You look at the oil pan, you can look up, you can look around, okay? 
Uh, looks like we have the, the aqua hot. That's the aqua hot exhaust right there. Uh, there's the little car that drives underneath. This little camera is on a remote control car and it drives underneath the RV so you can take pictures, uh, maybe five, six, or seven of these things underneath. And then the client can also see what we saw, right? Okay, so again, I will, I will highly recommend that you, uh, you go to, let me jump back to my uh, presentation here, go to, go to this link here and you can look at this report yourself, just delve through, see what ins the, my, the inspector is saying about and uh, you know, kind of get a flavor of what, it, what how an inspector, this is a great report. This is an inspector creating a great report. This is the quality that we as NRVI inspectors, this is what we are teaching. This is what our clients expect. And this is what we want our inspectors to have uh, for their, uh, for their uh, RV buyers or sellers for uh, contracting them to inspect RVs. Now, I mentioned fluid analysis. This is something else we can do. And on this RV, we pulled engine oil, engine coolant, transmission oil, we pulled the generator oil, generator coolant, and then there's an aqua hot system. It's a hydronic heating system. We pulled the uh, transfer solution out of that. And this is only half the report, but then we give this report to our clients and it has a rating system. And this uh, was kind of interesting. Some of them were slightly abnormal. There's, uh, there's verbiage that is uh, written by the data analyst when they say, you know, nothing really is needed at this point, continue to monitor, things like that. So this was the engine oil, the transmission fluid. We have the engine coolant, you know, was just into just slightly abnormal. The coolant on the generator was fine. And the most concerning was the coolant on the aqua hot system. And in this particular case, the analyst uh, at the lab recommend cooler change is suggested. And the reason being that the glycol level is uh, isn't proper mix for heat transfer. Okay, so they, this report basically tells the uh, owner, the new owner, or the person that's ordering this report, what it is that they need to do, okay? So this is fluid analysis, right? So between that and the report, even though there were some issues with this, there were some major issues and things, but the buyer felt comfortable enough, he came down with a $187,000 check and he purchased that RV sight unseen because of this, because of what? An NRVI inspector created for them. It gave him comfort in the buying decision. When Mr. Anderson checked back with him a month later, uh, he was happy with his purchase and enjoying that RV. All right, now, price and possibilities. Let's get into, we're getting into the home stretch. Okay, so hang in with me, okay? We don't set your pricing. We don't set pricing for inspectors, but we suggest possible pricing. And there's three levels of inspection. Maybe we're more like a, a basic safety inspection on steroids a mid-range inspection, what we call a premier, and that would be the, the real aggressive in-depth. And so depending on the type of RV that's being inspected and the level inspection sold, we're somewhere between 345 and 1299, okay? That's possibilities of pricing. Some of these include one fluid analysis, some include two, right? So we include two fluid analysis on the premier and one fluid analysis on the, what we call the essential plus. Now, fluid analysis can be sold separately. Anything from an hundred dollars for one sample on up to maybe the more you do a little bit discount a uh, five samples could be three hundred fifty dollars you set your margins but these are just suggested pricing uh, based on uh, margins that are acceptable within the industry right so those are possible pricing now how do you get started to being an inspector if this is something that's interesting to you uh, you would register and attend the NRVIA approved training uh, and this is this takes place at the National RV Training Academy in Athens Texas it's a three week course. And it's hands-on lab and classroom and lab outside inspecting RVs. This goes for three weeks. Uh, this is the National RV Training Academy. This is where the first week of training occurs. It occurs in this 15,000 square foot facility. It's very, it's comfortable, it's high tech, and it is set for training. And that's what, that's why it was created. Uh, we train both inspectors and technicians at the source. This is my room, okay? This is my room for the uh, inspector training. We, uh, we have uh, monitors at each table because we teach software. Sometimes that's hard to see. So there's monitors at each table. There's a sound system in there. There's a screen, big screen up front. It's a very comfortable room. It's got its own kitchen and bathrooms and so on, right? So this is, it's a three-week course. And how it starts is the first week, 
is RV fundamentals training. So we have to train you in AC and DC electrical systems, propane, water, RV appliances. And then week two starts, and then we teach what we call the principles of RV inspection. We learn more about the uh, NRVIA, uh, what part of the first week applies to actual doing inspections. Uh, the second day, we talk about business type things, business discussions, setting up your business, uh, how to avoid getting yourself in trouble, uh, saving clients engines, in other words, fluid analysis. And then we get into the software of creating great inspection reports. Uh, we do a little bit more business discussion on uh, Wednesday of the class, uh, how to perform an RV inspection, and then start inspecting a towable RV, something like a travel trailer or possibly a fifth wheel, depending on what the students bring. Uh, Thursday is outside all day inspecting an RV and then uh, creating an RV inspection report on Thursday and then into Friday. And then if we have time, we get, we're able to review those reports and the inspectors are able to share with each other and kind of critique each other and see, you know, kind of fill in the gaps, what did we miss, what wasn't understood, and the learning continues. Now what we do is we take it into the third week and we call this the advanced uh, inspection prints, advanced inspection uh, teaching, where now we start to get into the home gate software, how to use it for your business, how to communicate with a, a clients, how to speed up the process, not using a walk sheet or a piece of paper and a checklist, but actually using a tablet or a phone to go ahead and do that electronically so that you're able to get that report out that much faster and that much more accurately. Uh, Wednesday, we get into higher levels of inspection with Class A diesel pushers, uh, those big buses with diesel engines. Sometimes that's scary to folks, so we, we cover uh, that. Uh, Thursday is another full mock inspection, okay? This time on a motorized unit, okay? And like the first inspection, the second one, this is a course requirement. You must complete two inspections before you leave at the end of week three. Uh, and then Friday is uh, completing the reports and then having some review uh, going over those reports to, again, be sure that we're, we've covered the material and that you understand the process. And then Saturday is the NRVIA certification pretest and then the actual certification exam. So when you're done, Saturday of that third week, you leave as a certified NRVIA inspector ready to go out and do business and start making money. Uh, this year, I've heard great stories. Uh, just heard a couple weeks ago, an inspector said, he was, I'm so busy, uh, I, you know, I'm so excited, but I, I feel so bad that I have to turn business down. And I, I, lo I, I love hearing it, but I don't love hearing it because that means we don't have enough people in the area. But he's out there doing a great job, and we love hearing stories like that. So I know this system's working. I know it equips people to get out there. What we're doing is helping them to go out and be ready as soon as they leave class. Once they have their business entity insurance, insurance and all that, they can get started now. Cost to get started, right? We've got some fees here, right? This is for training, okay? Estimated education costs, somewhere around plus or minus $8,600. It depends on your situation, where you're coming from, how much you spend for food and things like that. So, you know, somewhere in that realm, okay? And then total, uh, I've listed low end, high end, uh, including training, business licenses, tax IDs, business insurance for a year, this would just be general liability. But then if you included Arizona emissions insurance, that would add more. So you can see that we've got some, you know, it depends on you, depends on your equipment, depends on what you have, depends on what you need to purchase. So we could be somewhere between $9,600. We could be as much as $19,000. It really just depends on the cost in your area and what it takes for you to get set up. I I'm proud to say when I started my business, it cost me $5,036. I remember that number distinctly. It went, it, it went right in my business plan. There was, there was my starter cost, $5,036 uh, to, to get going for me. And now again, costs have certainly risen, but uh, back then that, that's what it was, right? So keep this in mind. Now, what about the return on the investment? Let's get to the shark side of this, okay? Well, this is the part I love, right? Now, let's assume revenue of $400 for a towable RV, right? 400, now I mentioned quite a range, but let's go low, 400 for towable and 700 for motorhome, okay? And let's assume first that you do once a month, okay? You do one a month and it's, let's say in a year, you do 10 travel trailers or fifth wheels and two motorhomes. So that's $5,400 or an average of $450 a month. Now for a lot of people, $450 might be a big deal, right? That might make a, be a big deal for them. For just doing one a month, it might really help maybe you know, fill in that gap that isn't there. What about once a week? 
So that would, let's say we did 41 travel trailer or fifth wheels and 11 motorhomes. That would be 24,100 the first year, an average of $2,000 a month. All right, that's kind of starting to get exciting. Okay, so a little bit, you know, it's gonna take a little bit longer at this rate to get that return on investment, getting a little bit closer here. Then what about every other day? I mean, someone's gonna get out there and kick it and take this seriously. So they wind up doing this many inspections and they do $83,600 in their first year or close to seven grand a month. Is this possible? Yes, it is. We have inspectors doing it. We've got stories of that. Uh, at the end, I'm gonna ask you, uh, send me an email and I'll share with you uh, uh, an ebook. And we've got stories in there and it's more information about this process. But inspectors who tell their stories about what happened to them when they started their inspection business, all right? So it's pretty good. If I were a shark, I'd look at this and go, hmm, all right, yeah. Let's, let's, let's think more seriously about this. All right, step closer look. Now, are you the person to be a certified inspector? Well. You know, that's kind of up to you, but uh, we had a brochure that we've used for quite a number of years, and uh, this is one of the items out of it, and it said, if you enjoy RV, you want to help other people. If you like helping people, this is a great business. It's a great way to do it, especially if you like the RV industry and want to make a difference in it. And last and certainly not least, you want to be successful building a business around something you enjoy. Pam and I were looking for something that we could do. My dream as a 26-year-old was to be in Amway and sell soap, but be able to travel the country in an RV and, and write those travels off selling soap. I got excited about that. Well, it turned out much better than that. I can do the same, but I got to be in an industry that I love. So it worked out even better than I had imagined uh, back so many years ago. Now... Last slide, and you're all going probably amen. I, I ran an hour. I ran a little bit longer than I thought. I hope that's okay with you all. Uh, what I want you to do to get started, uh, request a free ebook, okay? Email me at howard at nrvia.org, and I'll, this is the cover page of it. It's about 61 pages. I'd be happy to send that out to you, okay? You may also go to nrvta.com slash contact and dash student dash advisor, and uh, this is on the nrvta.com website. You can go there and you can speak directly to a student advisor who will walk you through the process of a little bit further, a little bit more detail than what I did here about how you be can become an RV inspector. If you'd like to find a certified NRVIA inspector, you can go to nrvia.org and locate one there. Thinking about becoming a certified RV inspector? Click on the link below to download the latest copy of our ebook and learn what it takes to become a certified NRVIA RV inspector.